Good morning, everyone. Um, today I will be talking about um, the Sabit project, uh, which is all about um, compiling a spoken academic Belgian Dutch corpus. Um, and during today's presentation, I will focus on um, how the project came to be and uh, on the corpus compilation process. Um, so the project um, has its origins in uh, the need of students for um, more guidance or support when it comes to academic uh, language and academic vocabulary. Um, so research has indicated that academic vocabulary uh, poses a challenge for students, um, especially in the comprehension of lectures. Uh, and this is the case for both L1 and L2 speakers of Dutch uh, who enter Flemish um, higher education. Um, as you all know, lectures are a very predominant form of instruction um, in higher education, especially during the first bachelor. So these students actually um, have to process a lot of new subject matter in a register that they do not fully master yet. Um, and this is especially problematic considering um, that research has also indicated there to be a link between academic language skills um, and success in higher education. Um, additionally, there uh, seems to be a lot of focus on language support as well as language policies in higher education, but the um, research into their implementation is actually quite limited. Um, and something that attests to this focus on language support and language policies in higher education, but um, that also attests to uh, the limits on research into this matter is the fact that uh, academic vocabulary remains a challenge for students, that is L2 speakers um, of Dutch, uh, even when they pass university entrance language tests. Um, so these L2 speakers that come into Flemish higher education, they indicate that listed the listening tasks on these university entrance language tests um, that they actually perceive them to be easier than the actual lectures that they get um, during their education. So they mention um, that rate of speech, uh, variation in pronunciation, accents and intonation uh, can all impede comprehensibility. Our, our corpus um, actually um, poses a solution for these two big problems in two ways. So first of all, a corpus um, on spoken academic Belgian Dutch would allow us to identify the academic vocabulary used in lectures, uh, which would in turn allow us to um, look at existing materials and um, com uh, compare the language that we identify using our corpus as being ad academic and the language that they use in their materials. And secondly, we uh, could also develop new corpus-based learning materials to help improve students' their academic language uh, skills. So the gaps that our project tries to uh, address are the creation of an academic spoken word list to again, help improve students, um, their academic language skills. Um, we do this after the example of an English list by Dan Cox, Hetz and Webb, uh, which is the academic spoken word list, of which you can see a screenshot uh, on the presentation. Um, and so the second gap that we want to address um, is the creation of this corpus, because of course, to create a list, you will need a corpus. Um, and up until now, there wasn't any suitable corpus available for this. Uh, there have been some spoken academic corpora for English uh, that would also explain why they already have some lists available, um, but this wasn't the case for Dutch up until now. Uh, and then um, the third gap that we want to address is uh, the training of deep neural networks for speech recognition on this special kind of input because um, this just happens to be the um, most time efficient manner to create a spoken corpus. Um, as you probably know, uh, creating such a corpus is very time and effort consuming. Um, so 
is also probably the case why there wasn't um, a corpus on this kind of input before. Uh, so to sum up the objective that we want to address are the creation of this multimodal corpus, which includes text, audio, and video. To in, um, we want, also want to increase the efficacy of uh, automatic speech recognition um, to hopefully attain automatic transcription of language lectures in time. And we also want to build or create a frequency-based vocabulary list using this corpus. So step one for a corpus, of course, you need data. Um, and we've been collecting um, lectures specifically. So these are all first bachelor lectures um, that were taught either online or live on campus, um, mostly from universities. Um, we're still working on trying to get some data from university colleges. Um, and all of the lectures that we collected were recorded between 2019 and 2022. Um, so we thought that this would be a good a solid base for corpus selection um, because first of all um, we can't be sure if and to what degree the language of um, later bachelor le lectures and master's lectures would differ from the language used in first bachelor lectures um, and we also wanted to take into account the um, main pedagogical goal of our corpus, which is to build this vocabulary list that is aimed specifically at first bachelor students um, in Flemish higher education. Um, so in total, we've collected about 1,028 lectures, um, but our initial corpus will only include um, about 200 of them. Um, this is for a variety of reasons. Um, the main one being that we wanted to give pref uh, precedence to um, lectures that were taught live on campus, um, to have this emphasis on more spontaneous speech rather than um, these pre-recorded and pre-scripted pre lectures that we also uh, collected. Um, and of course, um, there's also uh, practicality to uh, take into account because even with an ASR system, it still takes a lot of time to transcribe um, all of these lectures. Um, and our selection uh, in the end was also um, based on academic division, as you can see on the screen. Um, we've tried to include an equal amount of uh, biological and health sciences, humanities and arts, physical sciences, and engineering, and social sciences and education uh, within these 200 lectures that we uh, had for, that we have selected for our initial corpus. Um, and the reason behind it is that we want our corpus to be representative of both um, Belgian academic, spoken academic language in general, but we also want the corpus to be rep representative of each of these four academic divisions. Uh, so this is an overview of our corpus compilation process. Um, so once we have those lectures, we generate ASR transcriptions. Uh, then we manually correct about 30 minutes per lecture uh, using a protocol that is based on uh, the Corpus Gesprok Nederlands. Um, and we only correct about 30 minutes per lecture, um, again, because of practicality, but also because we want to eliminate differences, differences in length between lectures of different disciplines and institutions so that we have a well-balanced corpus. Uh, then the fourth step is that we also collected some written course materials to train the language model of our ASR system even better. And then the final step would be the post editing and um, making the corpus available via the website of the Dutch Language Institute and the Clarion Virtual Language Observatory. And uh, I will briefly zoom into steps two and three um, of this corpus compilation process. So the automatic speech recognition system that we use is a Kali based ASR system tuned for Belgian Dutch. So it's a deep neural network system that was trained on 
the spoken Dutch corpus, the corpus is broken Nederlands, um, and the output of this system uh, or CTM files containing timestamps and confidence levels for each recognized word. Uh, and this raw output is then inserted into the Elan program, which is software to transcribe audio and video files. Then the second uh, big step for the compilation process is um, the manual correction. This consists of two big processes. So first we have veteran segmentation. Um, this is um, the process, the phase in which we place boundaries onto the audio signal um, based on a um, unit that we call chunks. These are very short pieces of audio signal that we can um, delimitate on the basis of a pause before and after it. Um, we also uh, use some, uh, we also isolate student interactions and background noises. And we do this to um, facilitate the um, uh, manual correction because the ASR system recognizes everything at word level, but it can also make mistakes across these word levels. Um, so if we do the utterance segmentation on a manual manner, this would then uh, facilitate um, the manual correction of the transcription itself. And the manual uh, correction of the transcription then also consists of two uh, phases. So first we um, correct everything on an orthographic level, so we standardize spelling, add punctuation, etc. Um, and next we intervene on an acoustic level, which means that we annotate reductions, um, dialects, slips of the tongue, etc. Um, and this manual correction is very significant because it allows us to compare uh, the ASR transcription with our manual correction, which in turn allows us to calculate word error rates. Um, so, as of now, um, we're, um, we've just completed the manual correction and the post-editing of 160 lectures. So these have um, undergone uh, part of speech tagging, um, morphological segmentation, um, parsing, etc. Um, and all of this uh, will soon be available, will be made available to you. Um, within a few months, I guess, because we still have to do about 40 lectures after this. So uh, for the conclusions and future work, we still have to combine um, some metadata that we've also collected on the um, lectures and that teach the lectures uh, with our linguistic annotations. These will all be made available in a Black Lab Corpus Query engine. Uh, one preliminary conclusion that I can give to you is that while a general domain is our system, like the one that we use, um, yeah, does help to speed up the transcription process, it also does not contain a specialized vocabulary, which is very noticeable in the kind of mistakes that the system makes during transcription. So it um, tends to make mistakes whenever it comes across um, a very um, discipline-specific words, for example. Uh, and we expect that um, when we further train the model uh, on the specialized vocabulary and, um, uh, yeah, and the uh, written course materials, that it will improve the ASR accuracy and speed up the post-editing process as well. Um, and then finally, we um, hope that our corpus will also be used for the validation of existing materials on academic Belgian Dutch, um, and that it also have wider applications, for example, use um, in comparisons at lexical, syntactic, and other levels um, with other Dutch corpora. Um, and then I'm going to skip the last slide because I just edited it in case I had time, but um, I don't think that will be the case. Um, so if you have any questions about the lists that we're still um, planning to make, then you can ask them uh, after the presentation. I will be happy to answer them. Um, if you would like to have more info, you can scan the QR code or visit our website or contact me. Thanks a lot for presenting this very interesting purpose. Uh, we have time for questions. Please.
Thank you for a very interesting presentation and for a very interesting corpus that you can now add to uh, the Dutch collection that we have. I was interested in the um, automatic speech recognition uh, process. Indeed, typically it will fail on the jargon words, but maybe also on other words. Um, could, could you make an evaluation whether it all it made sense to have such a transcription rather than starting from scratch? Um, so. I did make the comment that there isn't a really specialized vocabulary and that's the cause of the mistakes that we still have in the ASR system. Um, but if you would ask anyone who has ever transcribed um, any spoken language instances, it takes um, a lot more time to start from scratch um, because for instance, if we look at our ASR system, um, all the general or um, everyday language is already correct. So the only things that we actually do need to correct are those very um, yeah, specialized instances of vocabulary. Um, a very specific instance would be the names of all kinds of DNA sequences in biology lectures. So that's the kind of thing that we still need to correct. And it's quite understandable that an ASR system that is only trained on is very, um, everyday used language that it doesn't really know how to do that so yes. well it's really worth a compliment to the colleagues in Leuven who made this Kali system that it did so well on the other words really good thank you thanks for a very nice talk uh, did you control for the mother tongue of the recorded lectures are they all native speakers of Flemish or do also Dutch lectures come into your data set or people from Valonia whose first language is French or even some international lectures yeah and how um, does ACR fare with those so uh, that's um, where the importance of the manual selection of those 200 lectures out of those 1,028 comes in. Um, so we did control for the native tongue. Um, and I think I can only um, think of one instance in which we had a second, uh, an L2 speaker of Dutch that had submitted some recordings and to be sure we didn't include that person. We've also had one um, Dutch Dutch speaker submit recordings uh, and we actually handed those lectures over to a sister project of ours uh, that which is called Sanit, which is the Dutch Dutch counterpart of Sabit.